20 miles west of Sacramento, California, in the community of Orenfro, on a cold, wet morning at sunrise. I'm Jack Whitaker, and the CBS Sports Spectacular is about to bring you the 1963 National Retriever Field Championships. To help us along, we're delighted to have with us one of America's happiest and greatest dog lovers, Mr. Andy Devine. Andy, uh, there are an awful lot of people getting up very early on a miserable morning. Well, you know, Jack, they say that uh, this group of people spend more money and more time to be uncomfortable than any other hobby that they have. They've come from all over the United States to the trials here, and uh, they've been training all year for this because this is the World Series of Retreat. Dog. How many dogs are entered here? Well, there's 57 dogs qualified, and that's out of approximately 30,000 dogs in the United States. Out of the 30,000, probably 10 go to the 10,000 go to the field trials, and these are 57 that have won their championships or have been qualified by winning one trial and picking up two extra points. These are the finest dogs that there are in the United States and Canada right now. And they'll be put through uh, what kind they'll of trials there? They'll be put through uh, ten tests, five on land and five on water. Now this is a water test and this is a blind retrieve. By a blind retrieve, this is uh, uh, where the, the bird is planted, as you can see them planting that there. Now the trainer here has seen the bird, but the dog is behind the tarp and back, and he hasn't seen this. Now, the, uh, the idea here is to get the dog into the water and out to that bird, and he has no knowledge at all where it is. He'll do it all with hand signals and with the whistle. There he goes. He's in the water, and he's making his approach now. Now the big thing is for the trainer to keep him off the land. He hit him with the whistle there and gave him the direction, and he'll go right out right out that little narrow inlet. He hit him with the whistle there because he was getting too close to that boat. Pull him off of it. And he act dog actually sees the handler motion. And that's right. But if you notice, he stopped and watched him all the way through there because if he gets over in that in those toolies there, so he stopped him again because he's getting too close to that edge. He's liable to lose him. If he can get him out past this point, just a little ways farther, then he may hook it by scent or see the bird, which I think he's done. I can uh, tell by the way he's going now, he's picking up speed. This, by the way, is a yellow lab. Uh -huh. And uh, there's two different colored Labradors, the black labs and the yellow labs. And uh, it's hard to say. You can breed two yellow labs and get black pups, and you can breed black labs and you'll get a yellow pup in that, uh, in that litter. Andy, what other good points come out of a championship like this other than to name the best dog in the country? It is probably the biggest boon to con conservation that we have because uh, these dogs will retrieve 40% uh, of the birds that you knock down, which would be lost. This is number 10, Brandy Spirit of Netley from Fredonia, Wisconsin. And that's Del Huffstutter, the handler. They're professional handlers, aren't they? Yes, yes, they are. They're uh, uh, a lot of professional. This is the open. They can be either uh, amateur or professionals. Now, they do have a trial where it's only uh, amateur handlers, but this is the open, and the dog that wins the amateur uh, championship automatically qualifies for these. But a lot of these handlers will handle as many as uh, oh, five or six dogs, and they'll all be from different kennels. Now this dog did a real good job. He went right out through that uh, little narrow inlet and uh, we'll come back in. And now while they're coming in, the, uh, the boys in the boat will go out and plant another bird. And each time, uh, more dogs are being eliminated. That's right. And the dogs eliminate themselves. They set up, uh, the judges try to set these tests up so that they don't have to, uh, to pull a dog out of the, out of the test, that the dog will eliminate himself. And as uh, you'll see as you go on, the test will get tougher. Now this dog, these are decoys, which are wooden blocks to uh, fool other ducks. And sometimes they fool the dogs, too, but uh, they put them there because that is one of the things that you'll run into in, uh, 
in, in hunting, and they try to, uh, to simulate uh, the field trials as much like natural hunting as they possibly can. And this dog is doing a fine job. I think he's hooked that bird because he's putting on speed. Sure he did. It's wonderful. It's amazing. I don't think anyone ever will get a thrill like the thrill that you get hunting over a dog. It's, uh, it's just great. And they get to be more than part of the family. They get to be one of it. Right back to the handler with the dog bird. That's right. The, the bird is given to the judges, and the judges look the birds over to see if the dog is what we call hard mouth, which very few Labradors are now. Well, this is a cornfield, and this is a blind retrieve on land, they call it, that is planted. And uh, you notice this is a little tough because this canal here is, uh, is also a, a diversion canal because when the dog comes out of there, you don't know where he's going to go up. He's got to come out of there the best way he can, and he's liable to go off the line that uh, he was sent on. But he's hooked that bird, and he certainly didn't... It didn't bother him a bit. He came right on in on it. How does he wait for a signal to come back? No, they usually give them a little uh, uh, signal, as you heard back there, which is a come on in signal. But uh, uh, they're anxious to get back and go get the, uh, the other bird if there is one. The reason for a blind retrieve is uh, that's the bird that you cripple or uh, knock down that sails way out and that the uh, dog himself might not see it. He's watching the bird that falls close, and that's the, uh, the bird that you have trouble getting and you might lose. There's number one, uh, tar blood of Abbasaraka, and we're getting near now to the end where just the top dogs will be, and we'll be back with more competition in just a moment. Side of Sacramento, where the 1963 National Retriever Field Championships continue. And here goes the young one hitting that water pretty smartly, Andy. Yeah, that's a, a Pete Jones and a, and a young dog that he's done very well with this year. about to blow that whistle to pieces there. <laughs> right at this moment, you couldn't take the blood pressure with a speed gauge either. Here is probably one of the most embarrassing moments to a handler is when the judge very politely says, would you pick him up, please? <laughs> this is a real good little dog, and I know that in a couple of years you're going to hear a lot from him because here he comes without the bird or without a handler. He's left in disgust, huh? <laughs> This is a dog waiting for his turn. As soon as this dog gets through, why, it's his turn to go. Here's one of the current leaders, I think, uh, Andy, number 57. Yeah, 57 is a real good dog, and, and this is a tough test because if you notice they're working in a cornfield, and uh, every row of corn and every ear looks the same out there. This dog is handling real nice and should pick it. He did. He hooked it right along in there, right near that little bush that's planted so that the handler can tell where it is. But he's done a real good job on that. There's a real good dog. Richwood Playboy, owned by Mr. Herbert A. Schultz of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And the handler there is Jake Barrett. Look how daintily they carry that. Thing. Yeah, well, he knows that water is a little yeah. cold for me, and it's the first time. If you notice, this is a pheasant, too, and that pheasant blends right into that cornfield out there. But it's really a thrill to, to hunt ducks or pheasants with these dogs because they, they love the hunting as much as you do, and uh, 
They're a great company. Actually. Oh, they're a lot of company, and they can't. Uh, I know my old dog. If I start getting the guns out, my she's out in the car waiting for me to go. Well, now we move over to another area and another type of competition. Now, uh, what does this entail, Andy? Well, now this is a triple. This is two mark birds and a blind. Now, a mark bird is what? A mark bird is a bird that goes up. And who are they? Those are all the vines. Those are our two boys and their new wives. Oh, fine. Now, a mark bird is what? A mark bird is a bird that uh, is uh, thrown in the air. As you noticed here, the, the man on the left is a gunner, and he'll uh, fire the gun in one direction, and the bird thrower throws that bird out in the tulies out there. And the reason they throw the birds is so that they'll get a uniform fall, so that every bird will uh, will land in approximately the same place. Now, this is really a diversion bird. This is uh, something like a crippled bird that you were hunting. There's one bird here, and there's another bird, a dead bird, off to the left. Now, he picks up this bird first, then he's, uh, he'll pick up the bird over to the left, and then clear across the water is a... Uh, is a planted bird that's planted out there and only the handler knows where it is. That would take the place of a long falling cripple. Now this bird was also thrown in there by the uh, by the bird thrower and it's into the tulis. Now you don't have to go in there and hunt because that wind has drifted that bird into there. Now if he comes downwind of it, he'll pick it up. And that's exactly what he did. You see he was about 10 feet away from there when he hooked it. I want to explain the reason for these two birds. When they go to send this dog out for the long blind out there, these two fowls will have a tendency to pull him off of the direction that the handler will give him. And if you'll notice now, he'll come in and hand the bird to the, uh, to the handler, and he'll, he'll take a little more time than usual in lining this dog up to send him out on that blind retreat. Interesting to see how he lines them up here, too, isn't it? Yeah. He gets him right in there in the hand right by his head. Now, watch the line this dog takes. You send him out. Now, this is set up in such a way that you've got three different little lamb spits with tulies between where you are and where the bird is. And being hunting dogs, their tendency is to to hunt that area, but what you would like for him to do is to go right straight out on the line that you sent him. And that's when you'll see him get offline a little bit, and you'll hit him with the whistle right there. See him look at him, he tells him to get back. Now you'll want to hunt this one out. The one the others have had trouble with is that next one out there. This is the one that, uh, that they want to run. Now he still wants to look this area over. I'll be losing valuable points here. That's right. This dog is losing a few points because, in other words, he's got a, a refusal there when he told him, told him to get back. Right here, he hit him with the whistle and said, get back, but he still wants to see. Now there's another refusal. He's got to hunt that area out. He's right now, he doesn't believe anybody but himself. See, now he refused again. This dog is, is, is a good dog. It's too bad because he was in real good shape up to this point right here. And you should get out there and pick that bird up at any minute now. You'll hook him right in there. You know, he went by it. He was upwind. Now he's downwind. He's got the bird right in there. And then quickly back to the uh, handler. Oh, yeah. They, uh, they think this is great. He's just coming in fine. They love to come in like that. Well, that seems to be a most difficult test for the dog to die. That is one of the toughest tests that, uh, that you can get. Watch this truck for. This is a truck that uh, plants those long birds. That you see this bush, and this same boy plants them for all the dogs so that they all get the same bird, you might say. I see. Well, they're being eliminated bit by bit here. We're down to about... Ten top dogs now out of the 57 that started. And this triple uh, competition still uh, going on. This is number four, Howie's Happy Hunter, <clears throat> owned by Mrs. William L. Austin of Atlantic Beach, New York, and handled by Bud Hedges. Didn't waste any time, is he? No, he's going after that bird. Now, you see, this was the first 
the last bird shot. And uh, they have a tendency to go to the, the last bird that, is, uh, that falls before they turn around. And, and you'll see the handler pointing to the, uh, to the other bird. And that's to kind of improve their memory a little bit. <laughs> See, he makes a, a big wide circle to come in here, and you go right in and set this is what's a thrill. And this is known as steady to shot. In other words, they stay there, and now you watch, he will not leave till he's sent. In other words, the judge calls his number, two, and then the handler sends him. And that's a good steady dog. I've got a, an old running dog that would make a center fielder on any baseball team in the world. The minute that bird starts down, she's out there waiting for it to fall. All right, number four, Howie's Happy Hunter now. Still has ahead of him now this blind retrieve, which is about 300 yards across the body of water. We'll be back to see that in just a moment. Ranch outside of Sacramento with the 1963 National Retriever Field Championships continue. This is number four, Howie's Happy Hunter, one of the few dogs still remaining, and he's off now on his blind retrieve. He's got a good start here, Andy. This dog is doing very good. He's a good bulldog, and I like the way he goes through the water. Knows where he's going. Boom, he really locked that up. He went right to it. That's a fine job. Really a fine job. Why was the Mace Ranch uh, chosen this particular competition? Well, the Mace Ranch is one of the few ranches that we have on the Pacific Coast that has everything on it. You have your water, you have cornfields, you have alfalfa, you've got your marshy land, and uh, there's not, uh, well, there's 14,000 acres here, and there's not many pieces of land that big in California that haven't got homes on it now, Jack. All these people coming from all over the country here, uh, putting in a lot of time and effort and money. To... That's right. They've trained for for months to bring a dog to the to the trials here, and uh, it's always interesting to people that don't know that there's only one prize. It's just first place, and who wins second or third, you'll never know. Here goes number one, Tarbla, the Vassaraka, owned by Mr. John Love Jr. and Mr. Bruce Bridgeford of Sheridan, Wyoming, and one of the remaining competitors in very good shape at this point. Now, this is a good little dog. This is a young dog, and uh, it's doing very well. This dog has done real well throughout the Midwest, and uh, Jack Love can be real proud of this dog. It's a, it's a, it's a real good one. Dog is picking up the diversion dogs birds real, real well. Here's number five, Deltone Calvin, owned by Mr. Louis J. Snoyenbos of Baldwin, Wisconsin. That's Tony Berger, the handler. Tony's a, a real fine handler and a fine dog. This is a good combination. Tony is one of the few professional handlers that's already won the National Retriever Trials twice. Well, very shortly here, we're going to find out which of these beautiful animals is the best Labrador Retriever. As the competition now is gradually getting close to the end. We've changed our position now, and uh, we're in what looks to me like alfalfa. This is alfalfa, Jack, and this is about as tough a cover as you'll run into because, as you can see out there, it all looks alike, and there's a definite odor to alfalfa. And uh, uh, the dog that'll work good here is, uh, well, he'll just work good any place. This is 53, Beauty Woods Rare Trouble, who has had a fine time here at uh, the Mace Ranch. He's done quite well. Having a little trouble right in there. The Tony had the handle in there. But this is a dog. These dogs, you never can tell. A dog will, will have his day. I mean, some dogs are what they call a hot dog. No pun meant, but uh, he'll just go out and just wrap every test up just like he's been doing it all year. Now we move into some uh, water hazards. What is this? Uh, well, now this is uh, this is going to be a, a blind retrieve, and uh, this is going to be a tough one because it's way out there. As you can see, they've got a motorboat to run out. That's about 250 yards out there, and there's a real strong wind blowing, as you can tell. And uh, you try 
in, send that dog out, give him a line so that he'll go downwind of that bird and maybe hook him 25 or 30 yards before he gets into it. And this is real, real tough whenever you're working in wind like this. This is 57, Ridgewood Playboy.
Andy, we'd like to thank you very much for sitting in with us and taking us through this competition. Well, thank you, Jack. It might be interesting to tell you that this dog's father, handled by the same handler, Tony Berger, won the, the national championship just eight years ago. Well, blood will always tell.